So I have a question from Zhang. Zhang asks, if someone is unable to move the hips backward further in a deadlift, ending up rounding the lumbar spine, does it indicate an inability to further nutate the sacrum and create compression at the pelvic diaphragm? Or does it mean he's not eccentrically orienting enough at the pelvic diaphragm to allow actions to happen? So Zhang, this is a really good question and it's gonna allow us to review the distinction between hinging and squatting activities because they are different. While both movements depend on some element of hip flexion, it is the orientation of the sacrum and the ilium that are going to help us determine whether we're hinging or squatting. And as you state, there is going to be concentric and eccentric orientation in the pelvic outlet, but it will be significantly different for a hinge than it is for a squat. So as we hinge in, say, a deadlift activity, what we want to see is the nutation of the sacrum, which would occur through internal rotation of the ilium as we nutate that sacrum. This creates an eccentric orientation in the posterior outlet of the pelvis and a concentric orientation in the anterior outlet. In opposition, during a squatting activity, what we're going to see is a counter nutation of the sacrum, which is the apex of the sacrum moving forward as the base moves back on an externally rotated ilium. What this is going to do is going to create eccentric orientation of the anterior outlet and concentric orientation of the posterior outlet. This is why a squat looks different from a hinge. Where the pelvis would move downward between the feet during a squatting motion, the pelvis is going to move posteriorly during a hinging activity. Both activities, of course, are going to result in some measure of hip flexion. So now let's look specifically at your question. If I am incapable of maintaining this nutated position as I am hinging, so the pelvis is no longer able to move back as I flex the hip because I can't maintain the nutation of the sacrum, I can't maintain the eccentric orientation of the posterior aspect of the outlet, what I may then see is a substitution in the lumbar spine above the pelvis, or I'll just simply see the inability to continue with an active range of motion through my deadlift pattern or my hinging pattern. So for instance, if I was someone that presented with a very narrow infrasternal angle that would bias me towards being a better squatter than a hinger, what I may find is when I try to acquire a hinging position in some form of deadlift variation, I may find that my movement capabilities are somewhat limited by my inability to nutate the sacrum. This would result in a substitution somewhere up the chain where I may actually utilize a lumbar flexion position or even a thoracic flexion position to acquire the end position rather than hinging. So Zhang, it's not really the fact that they lack the ability to eccentrically orient, it's where the eccentric orientation actually occurs. If I can eccentrically orient the posterior aspect of the pelvic outlet, I can most likely nutate, and that would allow me to perform any number of hinging activities without difficulty. If I'm incapable of acquiring this eccentric orientation of the posterior outlet, my ability to nutate the sacrum may be challenged, and therefore I may have to create a substitution in my hinging motions as you describe.